When I was a kid, my uncle Brujo would say, fear the devil. Evil is always waiting in the shadows. He told me that when that time came, El Jefe would rise to stand against it. I always thought he was crazy. Now, I may not be El Jefe, but I can see the time has come. The time to rise and stand against the evil. How's it going, team? This is the brown man. Okay, there you go. I had to fix my mic. <laughs> my bad. How's it going, team? This is the brown man. Today, I'm going to give you guys the support guide. This is going to be an overall guide for playing support. And some quick rundowns for each support character. I already have a guide uh, specifically for my boy, Evil Dead One Ass. Or as you guys know him as Bullhead Boy or Boops. So that will be in a card at the end of the video. Video, You guys can check that out. He is my main character. But not every person that plays support plays as my main man. So let's get into it. All supports share shemps and amulets whenever they drink. So within an 8 meter range. Pretty, pretty small than an 8 range. Um, if they drink the shemps, take an amulet, they'll share it with those around them. Um, it'll be 455 heal with maximum shemps plus and best. Um, you, you actually heal, or rather you give people, uh, maybe about, uh, under half of the shield bar when you share a shield. So you just want to be mindful of the numbers, um... Hunters have 900 health about. We were going to say that war warriors can have, uh, was like 1600, 1700 health. Uh, so you will decide when it is time for you to shemps, time to use an amulet, or when it's time for you to drop an amulet for a warrior. Because warriors will be able to give themselves two full shields when they have maximum shield and best. That's one. One is knowing the values of your shemps and your amulets. Knowing the values of your aura allows you to make better decisions when the time comes. Um, of course, supports also have Pink F. Pink F is a character's main way of uh, boosting their damage, boosting their stats. They have three Pink F in melee, three Pink F in range, five Pink F in health. That fifth invest only gives 50 more health. So you don't need to go full health immediately. The first 100 is pretty decent. A fourth pink F will give you an extra 100 health. Um, that last pink in health can be held out till the end if you need it. Um, they will have three pink F in fear, three pink F in stamina, and three pink F in shield. That's generally, uh, once again, their upgrade tree. In regards to their damage stats, they have a 20% debuff when it comes to ranged and melee. So they will officially do, or effectively do, 80% of weapons damage, whether it be ranged or melee. So do keep this in mind when you are picking up items. Um, if you find, for example, a legendary pistol, it might not be the most effective on, for example, a Cheryl. It'll be more effective on the Hunter, Leader, or an Ash, or an ED1 Ash. And if there is, for example, a nice purple mace, it might not be the most effective on uh, support, unless it's ED1 Ash or Blacksmith. So, let's get into some of the tech. Just real quick, it's nothing too, uh, too arduous. So, when it comes to support, supports can hold pretty much six shemps, six amulets, if they are invested out in the tree, you do want to be mindful. Communication is really, really, really important when playing Shem, playing, <laughs> playing support. You might as well be playing Shemps. Um, you do want to ping for Shemps. Maybe you're a shy motherfucker that don't really like to use the comms. That is totally fine. Uh, you should ping when you need a Shemps. Also, even if you aren't a shy motherfucker, not everyone will be in game chat. So pinging will be ex is extremely important when playing support. You can kind of condition your teammates to trust you by pinging and giving them a shield early in the match. 
this will allow them to kind of get to get a heads up. Is it like okay, this guy pinged and I got something, so this person is on it. It might seem a little redundant, but having the ability for the just the team to trust you or respect your ping comes a long way when you are applying support. Um, sometimes miscommunications can happen or fear can happen. When this goes off, you're going to have people drinking their own shemps. That's going to fuck up the economy if you are drinking a shemps and they're drinking a shemps. I do recommend um, having one bullet missing from your gun at all times. Uh, the thing about that is that it allows you to reload cancel. So you can cancel a shemps by reloading. That comes clutch when people are drinking their own shemps. So... You, you don't have to finish it. <laughs> you don't have to use two shemps um, when someone panic drinks. You can just cancel it. If you are playing ED1 Ash or Pablo, you can actually action cancel using your active as well. That comes quite handy just in case someone is drinking. That's just an alternative just in case you have maximum ammo. It is it is much more preferable to use your defear or pop in amulet a little bit early then use two shemps when it's not needed. Just be a little bit mindful of that. Of that. Also, as a support, do be mindful of your team. Maybe you have a hunter, and then something like a Mia. Um, handgun might be the best for you, just because, um, once again, you get a debuff. Handguns typically don't do too much damage, so you're taking a gun class. Um, and you're not really hurting your team by having a massive debuff uh, regarding using a stronger weapon. Um, also, this will allow you to keep in check hunters and warriors that are uh, are going rogue. The demon is in them, they're going rogue. You have a handgun with a decent amount of ammo that can keep them in check. Just a couple of things to keep in mind. Also, maybe get a fast weapon if you need, um, just to keep that hunter in check. Maybe a knife or something. You know, maybe the hunter goes rogue, you're up close, you're allowed to actually attack. Uh, dodge cancel after your last attack using lights and kind of spam and just lock them to death so you don't get murdered. Of course, be mindful of challenging a, a warrior. That'd suck. So, let's get into it. First up is going to be my boy Evil Dead One Ash. That is Bullhead Boy. His active allows you to defear those within range. His first passive allows you to actually heal those around you and yourself by 20 25% if you are prestige 1 um, of the damage that you do. Once again, going into one of the exceptions, it is okay to have this guy have a decent weapon that does a decent amount of damage over time. There are some weapons that do a decent amount of burst damage at once. Those are slower weapons like the lumberjack axe or sword. Or you have those that do a decent amount of damage but a decent amount of attack speed being the staff or the spear. Or you have those that are really fast and that will allow you to just rack up a bunch of shit such as the knife. So the way that armor works in this game, uh, just as an aside, is that when you start swinging your weapon towards the opponent, that's typically when the armor kicks in. When it comes to a lot of slower weapons, um, the armor kicks in, even for example, the shovel. When you bring that shovel around for that boop, that's when the armor kicks in. Not when you draw back, but when you swing it forward for that hit. Um, this is something to keep in mind as you pick your weapons with Evil Dead 1 Ash, because, alter because his alternate healing allows you to heal for every heavy that you do, so you do need to keep in mind uh, armor class for weapons that will allow you to get your heavies in. He is a decent support. When I say decent, I mean top tier um, because his other two perks on the bottom is marked target damage and marked target healing. This allows you and anyone in your team to do 20% more damage of range. This helps compensate for his debuff of range, of course, and you guys heal off of it. This is pretty solid. You can heal from quite the range. Um, you heal off of any damage type that you do effectively as Evil Dead 1 Ash, allowing him to be surprisingly tanky because though he doesn't have a health buff like Blacksmith, um, healing off of everything 
allows you to effectively have damage reduction or extra health while in combat. And you'll see that if you have something like Last Word and you get some of these Last Words hits off, you will easily heal a couple hundred health uh, on certain swings or a hundred, about a hundred. And that allows you to do pretty well. You're going to have, uh, what, 1200 maybe health invested. So healing a couple hundred on swings is a big chunk of your health that you just got back. It gets really ridiculous. Um, but, of course, <laughs> he is one of the more difficult supports to play. You're going to have to learn how to get them headshots. You're going to have to learn how to get the headshots probably without a shotgun class weapon because hunters will take that. And you'll have to learn how to dodge cancel and the basics of combat to land your heavies. Also, this will allow you, or this requires you rather, to understand units, units attacks, unit attack priorities so they don't beat you out of attacks. Next up, we're going to have Cheryl. Cheryl is the standard basic bitch healer. Uh, her active allows her to actually heal 60 health over a course of 6 seconds. Grand total of 360 heal. Um, Cola Coaster allows her to actually hold up to 8 champs when fully invested. Contact Courage decreases fear by 15 whenever you drink a champs for those in range. And Contact Healing heals an extra 100 or 125 health at Prestige 1. Not bad, super solid, super safe pick. Not really much to say about her. There really isn't too much tech. As I said, she's just very easy to play. Um, but do be mindful that she relies entirely on champs to be useful. Um, unless there's, you know, her active is up with only 360 heal. And with a cooldown of uh, about 2 minutes. So she effectively, she needs champs to be useful. So just be mindful with your champs. Um, be careful if someone is taking a lot of damage you might have to make a d very difficult decision as any support to not heal them if the objective can be done with them getting down sometimes it is a lot better to save three or four shimps um, than have someone not get down use three or four shimps and then be sh short on shimps longer down the road so these are decisions that you would have to make as support there might be times where someone can't dodge well and you're not trying to be mean, but you're just going to have to make a decision <laughs> of how to use your shimps and how to use the amulets. It just gets really tough, especially as Cheryl. She is just the, uh, uh, a shimps machine, which is not bad, but it does mean that she needs to ration. Because with really strong uh, shimps drinks, it's uh, she's just totally reliant on that item. So if, if she's out, she's out, and she's pretty much out of commission. Next up is going to be a small, short rundown of my boy Pablo Pablito. Pablito is a is a brujo especial. My boy is active, allows him to actually drop an amulet every 120 seconds or 110 seconds at prestige 5. Um, it is generally seen as one of the weaker actives in the game because he only drops one amulet every 2 minutes. However, it does come in handy with him allow allowing him to be a bit bulky. Um, so you might want to invest in shield a little bit early because he's going to have an abundance of amulets. So investing in shield a bit early allows you to ha walk around with a lot of shield bar. So if you want to invest in extra shield damage reduction, that might possibly be viable because uh, you're going to have a lot of amulets on you. Um, Infernal Camouflage, when you pop an amulet, demons are no longer able to detect you using demon vision. And anyone nearby in your sharing range will receive the benefit as well. Legacy of El Bujo allows you to actually carry an extra amulet. Um, and teammates get 20 extra shield when you share an amulet. So once again, he is the shield guy. And his last ability, Shamanic Protection, allows him to actually gradually recover shield over a period of time. Um, until you have at least one full shield bar. It takes a good couple of seconds, a good moment before it starts regening on its own. It regens a bit slow, so it's not the most useful ability, but it might come in a pinch um, if you are walking around just letting it regen on its own, and then you pop a shield after your one full shield bar has replenished. Pablo is a okay support. Um, definitely, if the team is coordinated, they're investing in the shields a little bit early as well. And Pablo keeping people topped off, he can actually be uh, quite a bit of a defensive 
beast for your team. And if you have warriors who are investing quite a bit in shield, this guy giving them a lot of shimps allows them, them to have quite a bit of sustain. Next up is actually going to be David. David Allen um, has gotten a bit of a nerf. And then the defense, or damage reduction rather, has been nerfed quite a bit as well. But, let's check it out. His active is Beacon of Hope. He drops a fire. The fire will reduce fear and bleed infernal energy um, for your team and the demon respectively over a period of time. It lasts 30 seconds. The cooldown is 120 seconds. So effective. So the effective cooldown is 90 seconds because it lasts for 30 seconds. Um, it is buffed up by his last perk, Boosted Beacon, which allows you to uh, bleed the demon's infernal energy when they get hit and increases the range. Um, when it comes to Soda Pop, he drinks a Shemps. Your team, anybody within the sharing range, will get a 20% damage reduction, 23% at Prestige 1. And Weapon Master Nail Gun, plus 20% stat across the board for using the Nail Gun. The Nail Gun is not the most economic uh, gun because it does use a lot of ammo for the damage. Um, Evil Dead 1 Ash, of course, does 20% extra damage after a headshot, effectively giving <laughs> Weapon Master Nail Gun if he needs, or effectively a Weapon Mastery on any gun, because he gets a 20% damage buff with any gun, and then gives your team <laughs> effectively a Weapon Mastery by boosting damage by 20% for any gun. So, he is definitely, he definitely outclasses David. He is the more offensive variant versus David being a bit more defensive um, Williams siblings versus the Allen siblings. Um, David is solid for his defense buff, but of course his active can be not felt so much when it comes to certain gains, games, and then his Weapon Master Nail Gun is almost never felt, um, unless you have for some reason stopping power as well and you use a Nail Gun, yeah, it'll be felt quite a bit then, but his Soda Pop will be his most uh, effective uh, relevance to any team adding damage reduction you might want to pop an amulet after you drink your simps 20% um, damage reduction on an amulet effectively gives you 20% more shield and your team 20% more shield as well so pop an amulet after you drink your simps and be mindful last up is actually going to be Blacksmith. Blacksmith cannot use a gun, however, in exchange, he has Weapon Master Melee. His active is Avenging Anvil. Avenging Anvil allows him to craft a random weapon based off the metal scraps he has. The more metal scraps he collects, the higher the chance of being purple or legendary. And you can gamble. That little bar will actually change colors as you collect scraps. You can gamble. Hey, maybe you have a 50% chance of a purple, a 50% chance of a legendary. Fuck it, right? Let's let's not use too much scraps. Gamble for a legendary. Um, of course, he cannot use a gun, as I said. So if he crafts like a legendary boomstick and, you, and you're out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you're going to have to mark it because he can't even pick up guns. So just be a little bit mindful. Open Master Melee allows you to actually have do 20% more damage. 20% more balance bar, 20% more dismemberment, but only 5% extra attack speed. This will allow you to be a balance bar beast, especially when you are invested in stunning strikes, or seeing, seeing stars rather, seeing stars. And uh, Tough as Nails gives you 400% extra health. Once again, you cannot use a gun, so you'll be in combat in the thick of battle for quite often. So having the extra health does help mitigate that. And Rough and Ready is his amulet perk. Arguably, it is superior to um, El Brujo's Especial's um, amulet perk. Rough and Ready allows you to actually have a 50% chance of an amulet not breaking. Cooldown is 40 seconds, but you and your team nearby does 10% extra melee damage, and that lasts for 20%. And of course, this is inferior to Evil Dead 1 Ash's buff. I will have to, of course, have to advocate for my boy Evil Dead 1 Ash. It does not have a range limit on his 20% buff. 
and he does not have a time limit or cooldown on that 20% buff. But of course, it does rely on hitting headshots and having ammo. Um, he is not bad. Blacksmith is can be a, a, definitely a fun character to play. Just be mindful that he does not have a gun. So if a hunter gets possessed, you are out of range. You are going to be shit out of luck, and you'll be murdered horribly. And that's it for the support breakdown. There will be a link, or rather a card at the end of the video for you guys to take a look at Evil Dead 1 Ash guide or basic combat guide if you guys want to learn the some basics of, of combat and whatnot. Of course, as playing a support, the last tip is going to be know your role. If you don't really require damage for your character then you can invest in balance bar balance bar is definitely going to be a uh, king for uh, pretty much probably any pats coming forward and including now so supports actually have 25% extra range balance bar so if you're going to be using a handgun or something being able to add 25% extra balance bar Allows you to get a lot more value out of your ammo per shot. So maybe a revolver will be your best friend. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want to learn more cards after, and stay tuned for more informative videos. If you guys have any tips, y'all can write them below. Or uh, call me a piece of shit for missing out on your favorite character. And write a tip for anybody who might be paying attention. Y'all be safe, stay hydrated, and of course, have a good one.